we're getting in every single class, in every single you know conversation that we're having. You know, we, we talk about how's the market in your area, what's happening for you, what's happening in your agency. And a lot of what people are talking about are all these new home purchasing programs. So, you know, some of them are for first homeowners, some of them are for other groups. Uh, and But government incentives or government assisted programs along that path. Now, we've, we've decided that we'll look at each one of these programs in turn. And yes, we'll have newsletters on it. And Friday's newsletter is about the first one that the majority of people want to look at, which is the first homeowner's choice program. Okay, so that's different again from, you know, first homeowner's grant or first owner's. This one, it's a new scheme that's been introduced to assist first home buyers in obviously purchasing their first home. It provides a choice for purchases um, that hasn't been previously available. Uh, in terms of stamp duty or tra you know transfer duty, as it's now referred to, I think you know for years to come we'll still all refer to it as stamp duty because that's what we've kind of grown up with. Uh, but transfer duty, concessions, or even exemptions. So the scheme allows for first home buyer to opt in to this scheme. So they actually have to choose to opt in, and then that's a, what they do with their legal practitioner is opt in when purchasing their first property for properties up to one point five million dollars. So they have the ability to choose to pay an annual property tax instead of the traditional transfer um, duty. So there's, as I said, there are other programs for uh, government assistance in purchasing properties, and we'll talk about, about those in weeks to come and obviously have newsletters and information on our website about it. But this first homeowner's choice scheme, it applies to contracts that are dated after the 16th of January, so we're now in that period, where buyers have the opportunity to, to choose or opt in, as they're referring to it, into the scheme. And it means that the, a person who's purchased a property already um, does, doesn't have it. Actually, it, it means that some, getting my words all messed up, I'm getting so excited about what this, what this uh, program offers. Uh, it doesn't mean that people who've already purchased are totally out. Um, but it means, and we'll talk about that in a while, because if they've purchased just before the end of last year, then they'll be able to make a claim to get that money back if they choose to do this program. But again, that's something that homeowners, first homeowners, would need to discuss with their legal representative. But um, the property being purchased has to be occupied, same rules as always with first home buyers, has to be occupied by at least one of the eligible purchasers as their principal place of residence for a continuous period of at least six months. And that occupation of, for that six months needs to start within the first 12 months after they've settled on the property. So same, same in terms of those first home buyer requirements about living in that property for a six month period. Now, for a first home buyer, there's no concessions even for a property uh, purchased over 800,000. So, you know, exempt under 650, there's, you know, some reductions up to 800. So say somebody's purchasing, a first home buyer's purchasing a property for 850,000, it will attract a transfer duty of $33,340. Uh, so anybody, anybody purchasing that property at 850,000 will be liable for that transfer duty amount of the $33,340. Straightforward. Okay, the alternative now for first home buyers is to access this first home owner's choice program. And it's a property tax assessed on the land value. Remember that point, it's assessed on the land value, which is generally not going to be the same figure as the, the property has been purchased for. So because it, it doesn't actually include the actual property, just the land value. So the, this land tax will be assessed on a yearly basis. So let's stay with the with the example of the the property being purchased for eight hundred and fifty thousand. So you know, and it has a land value that's been assessed in the in the previous year for four hundred and twenty nine thousand. Say so, so the tax for that first year under the first homeowner's uh, choice option would be one thousand six hundred and eighty seven dollars. And yes, I'm not that good at maths. I have the figures just on on a on a note here in front of me. So uh, you know. We have calculated those. Um, it's calculated at $400 plus 0.3% of the land value. So that land value of 429000 So just we've got to keep remembering that. It's based on land value. You purchase a first homeowner, purchase a um, strata lot, so an apartment. 
then that land value is probably going to be quite low. So that land tax is going to be, you know, not a huge amount. So you know that eight fifty thousand dollar purchase turns into a fourteen hundred eighty seven or sixteen sorry sixteen hundred eighty seven dollar land tax for that first year. Now you know over thirty years, and I'm not calculating any indexing which would occur. Uh, that amount would equate to $36,985. Now, we've done that on 30 years because, you know, somebody might have entered into a mortgage for 30 years, and if they're staying in that property for, for 30 years, uh, then that's how much they would pay. Now, that's 3600 know, ish more than they would have paid if they'd paid up front. And let's say, that, and it hasn't been indexed, so it would be more than that. So if, there's, if you're staying in the property forever then you know you ultimately you're probably going to end up paying that yes is there a cap on the years yeah 70 years so you know you know probably not going to stay there for 70 years who knows but so you know but if you only own the property for 10 years uh as that first home buyer the amount of tax would be you know the 16,870 so it's significantly less than that $33,000 initial upfront land, um transfer duty that you would actually pay so in some circumstances, the, the purchaser may end up paying more through that land tax option than they would if they paid the actual transfer duty up front. And in other circumstances where they're only looking at holding the property for a, a smaller number of years, the purchaser will pay significantly less than they would have had in their, in, paid in transfer duty. Now, of course, it is not your job as, as an agent to provide advice about this. Certainly, tell your any first home buyer to talk to their legal representative about, you know, whether they should opt in, opt out, look at all of their options, have a think about what they're doing. So again, you're not providing that advice because you're not providing financial advice, you're not providing legal advice. It is, that is not your job. You are in the business of selling property if you are in sales and talking to first home buyers. But certainly you can be that professional agent and be the one that says, hey, have you thought about this? Make sure you get some advice about it. It may well help you. You'll be seen and perceived as the uh, the good, thorough, professional real estate agent, and that gets your clients every day of the week. So, you know, that will be enable them to make the right decision for themselves because everybody's, it's going to be a different outcome. So each, because each home buyer has to obviously assess their choice to participate in this scheme or not. Now, that's the bones of it. Yes, of course, the information is on all the government websites. You can read it all there. Our newsletter will go out on Friday. You'll receive that if you're on our database. If you're not, then you can have a look at it on our website. But either way, it's uh, it's worth looking into if you are in sales in New South Wales. So that's what we've got on that. Mm -hmm.